Hello and welcome to IBV6 protocol lessons. In this lesson, we are going to identify the dual stack, which is one of the IBV4, IBV6 transition mechanisms. We will be focusing on the IBV4, IBV6 dual stack, and we are going to cover IBV4, IBV6 transition methods briefly and we will identify uh, dual stack and we will show how uh, dual stack devices are communicating and uh, we will explain how the DNS in the dual stack environment works and we will uh, use the uh, we will learn actually how to use the IBV6 addresses in the URLs in the lab exercise, we are going to configure the IBV4, IBV6 dual stack uh, in our network, in our topology. So let us start. IBV4 will not disappear anytime soon, but the migration to IBV6 needs to happen for at least the foreseeable future IBV4 and IBV6 will coexist. There is no deadline or switch over day to go from IBV4 to IBV, uh, IBV6 and the transition is expected to take years. In the meantime, the Internet Engineering Task Force IETF has created various tools and mechanisms to help network administrators migrate their network to IBV6. These techniques can be divided into three categories mainly. Number one, dual stack. Dual stack allows IBV4 and IBV6 devices to coexist on the same network. A dual stack device can be a host, server, or a router configured to run both IBV4 and IBV6 simultaneously. The second technique is tunneling. Tunneling means transporting IBV6 packets over IBV4 only networks. It is accomplished by encapsulating the IBV6 packets inside IBV4 packets. The third technique is translation. Network address translation 64 or NAT64 allows IBV6 only devices to communicate with IBV4 only devices using a translation technique similar to uh, NAT that is used in IBV4. Okay, now let us identify our main focus which is dual stack. Dual stack means implementing both IBV4 and IBV6 protocol on same devices. This will enable them to coexist in the same network. A dual stack has com a dual stack device actually has complete support for both IBV4 and IBV6. A dual stack device can be a host, a printer, server, router, or any other device. But any device should support both IBV4 and IBV6. If we have now dual stack configured in our network, there will be two parts actually. IBV4 part and IBV6 part. In the IBV4 part, there are protocols and techniques related to IBV4 should be supported, like IBV4 addresses, address resolution protocol, ARP, Internet Control Message Protocol, ICMP for IBV4, and the routers should support both IBV4 static routing and IBV4 dynamic routing. 
in the IPv6 part of the network, the techniques related to IPv6 should be supported also, such as IPv6 global unicast and link local addresses, ICMPv6 operations, including Slack, which is a stateless address auto configuration, and that, uh, that is a duplicate address detection. And the routers should support both uh, static and dynamic IPv6 protocols and they should also enable to send the ICMPv6 uh, router advertisement messages and can perform tunneling and translation services. So this is an overview of uh, the dual stack environment in a network. Now, let us see how two or more devices in dual stack environment can communicate. When a dual stack device is communicating with an IBV4 device, it behaves like an IBV4 only device. And when communicating with an IBV6 device, it acts like an IBV6 only device. The application layer inside the OSI can be carried in a TCP or UDP segment. This segment identified by the transport layer port number. So the port number could be used to identify the application. And this port number can be used in both stack in IBV4 and IBV6. Now, the segment is then encapsulated in an IBV, in an IP actually packet with the data or payload identified by the protocol, the protocol field in IBV4 and next header field in IBV6. So after we encapsulate the segment in an IB, we will use the protocol number field in IBV4 and next header field in IBV6 to identify the protocol, to identify which IP we use, either IBV4 or IBV6. For transport over the link, the IBV4 packet is encapsulated now in an Ethernet in the data link layer and we use 0800 as ID for the Ethernet frame to identify it as IBV4 Ethernet frame while in IBV6 we use 08DD ID to identify it as an IBV6 Ethernet frame the frame now is not treated, the Ethernet frame I mean, is not treated any differently by the switch, despite that the Ethernet uh, is at layer 2, has two, has a different type field when carrying an IBv6 packet. The switch can still forward frames regardless of whether it is uh, its payload is in an IBV4 or an IBV6 packet. So there is no you know difference between the forwarding process that is done in the uh, switches at layer two. Now how DNS works in, in dual stack environment. The application that supports both IBV4 and IBV6 protocol stack requests all available addresses for the fully qualified domain name FQDN from a DNS. In this case, 
the DNS server replies with all available addresses. This can include both IPv4 and IPv6 addresses. If the DNS server sends both IPv4 and IPv6 addresses, the operating system chooses which one to use. So if we get reply include both IPv6 and IPv4 addresses, the DNS will choose which one to use. In most cases, the application defaults to the IPv6 address, but this is dependent upon the operating system. So the, the default address is IPv6, but we can't change it. We can, you know, switch it to IPv4. The device then, after we choose, after the operating system chooses the uh, address, either IPv4, IPv6, the device then connects to the source using the selected IP protocol stack. So it is easy uh, to, you know, uh, to understand how the DNS works in a dual stack environment. Now, when an IP address is used in a state of domain name, the, uh, the application uses the protocol stack associated with a particular IP address. Suppose we want to visit a website inside our network or outside on the internet, outside our network on the internet. So we use the IP address uh, instead of the domain, we put uh, IPv4 or IP v6 in this case the stack related to the uh, to the particular ip address that we mentioned will be used if the user enters an ip address the application the ipv4 address the application uses ipv4 stack and if the user enters an ipv6 address the application chooses ipv6 stack but in most cases, the user uses URL, such as, for example, www.youtube.com. But there are times when it is necessary to enter an IP address instead of the URL in the browser, such as using the browser to uh, the browser uh, interface to access the router so we need to write the IP address if we use the IPv6 how we use it the problem is IPv6 addresses are not directly compatible with URLs because of the column in the addresses which is double dot Okay, the colon in the IPv6 addresses is interpreted as port number. So we need to know how to use the IP addresses in the uh, address bar of the web browser. For example, if we have this IP address for a server, for a web server, we should put it in this type of brackets. So we copy this address and put it between two big brackets and we use HTTP colon slash slash then we put we open the bracket and we put the the IPv6 address of the server then we can use for example uh, the port as as in here in the second example or we can use without any port or we can use a slash home if we want to uh, go to this folder inside the web server so this is the way that we should follow when we use ipv6 address in the url simply by using this kind of 
uh, packets, big packets. That's all for the theoretical part, and we are going now to the lab exercise. Thank you for watching, and see you in the lab exercise lesson.